there's always some new wonderful thing with uh, RC rock crawling and today I wanted to talk to you about something that isn't new and I thought a fitting place would be to film it in the back of my 20 year old Land Cruiser it is 20 years old today and it was the youngest of the three cars on this property for quite some time uh, before I gave it away my 80 series uh, had another seven or eight years on this thing N neither of them missed a beat they're um <laughs> they're just brilliant and reliable old four-wheel drives and often in in my videos you see my brother's old forerunner in the background i don't know that my brother even knows how many laps of the country it's done speaking of my brother this is his rc four-wheel drive trail finder 2. now this was a ready to run vehicle and it's nearly stock it's got metal uh, drive shafts it's got a stronger servo it's got a light kit that he stuck in it and it's got a winch on the front but otherwise this thing's stock it's got a little blue circle in here because this was the way that the the local uh, crawling group used to do things RC crawlers Melbourne they used to have a different colored dot for each class this was from class one which is a hard body rig now chances are if you're watching my channel and you're into RC's the trail finder 2 or the TF2 is not new to you it's a descendant of the Bruise Ruptor, which itself is a descendant of the Tamiya Bruiser. I actually had an original Bruiser about a decade ago, and I had it in, in a million bits in a restoration project, and that never quite finished. This is a body from the clone of the Bruiser. Now, I'll put this mic down and show you just how similar these two things are. So as you can see, the Trail Finder 2 is not, it's not a clone of the Bruiser. <laughs> it's like an improved version. The Bruce Raptor was the the middle point, and all of this, all of this is relevant, and all of it, and it's relevant because I'm filming in the back of this old car as well. This is all relevant because the Bruiser was one of those early, early trucks, along with the Clodbuster and a few others that were converted into crawlers by the the hobby community, and so the TF2 is like a spiritual successor to that. They took the Bruiser threw out some of its troubling design issues and improved on it wherever they could to make the Bruce Raptor. This is RC four-wheel drive. And then they followed with the Trail Finder 2 and this thing's been a stunning success. We've got uh, leaves front and rear. You've got the chassis mounted servo uh, there's a two-speed available for it. This thing is the single speed and it's mated to a 35 turn motor. I, like many, have found the RC four-wheel drive electronics to be maybe their weakest part, but thankfully electronics are cheap. You put a Hobbywing 1060 in one of these, a 45 turn motor and a stronger server and you're away. These still sell brand new on RC four-wheel drive and they've been cloned as well, but since they're a clone of a clone of a modded original <laughs> I don't know if anyone's keeping count anymore these things can be modded, they can be made beautifully scale as you well know now this thing has just had a, a coat of paint and it's got plenty of battle scars on it it also has won a local stage in, a, in one of the local comps it, and this is with its original steering issues it, it's, it doesn't have the full throw that it should have uh, there are mods to fix all these things but I, I say all this to, to note that the Trail Finder 2, even in its stock form, is still a beautifully useful scale rig. It's reliable, the axles are quite good, and there's a mod available for pretty much every single part of this vehicle. This thing's been out for eight years, so I, I've intended to not do a review so much as just a, I suppose to admire with you the Trail Finder 2. And I'm thinking I might build one up soon. I, I have a uh, Bruiser clone. I've begun my paintwork on it. It's still got some work to, to go on it yet, but you know, I stuck the Tamiya interior in, which goes in with a couple of bolts underneath. And, uh, I've painted it up, it's, you know, it's finished off, it, 
I reckon, can, reckon it looks pretty good. It hasn't been weathered or rusted or anything like that yet, but um, even in this form, I think it's it's ready to uh, to meet a, uh, a chassis, so I might look into that soon. But in the same way that the Hilux from the 80s, well the 90s especially, the Hiluxes are still sought after, the Land Cruisers are still sought after. If I was to sell this thing today, I'd get probably the same money, if not slightly more than what I paid for it. Uh, the 80 series was the same. They seem to hold their value. It's known as the Toyota tax when you're buying. Uh, and in this case, the uh, Trailfinder 2 is one of those models that just has a timeless quality to it. In the same way that uh, well, there aren't many that are that are that good. The SCX10, the granddaddy of the modern crawling platform, can still be had in clone form, new from various sites online. Not for very much money either, but you can still take that basic platform quite a far distance, uh, and you throw enough driving skill at it, and you really can drive a stock SCX10 to surprising heights against more modern equipment. So this is the Trailfinder 2 with minimal mods and it's still a very enjoyable, well used, well loved track. And I just wanted to make this video to say, hey, isn't it cool? You can still buy one now. And sometimes the newest stuff isn't necessarily the best stuff. There's a reason we reminisce about the good old days. And in this case, I think this represents some of the best old days of the modern crawling movement. So the RC4 Drive Trailfinder 2, it's a hell of a truck. Show me a like if you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane. I'll put a video up here next to me now that you might want to watch next, and I'll catch you next time on RCTNT.